Hey, what's up guys? Let's talk balance changes and the best deck for you to use after the balance changes. Now, uh, let's go over them real quick just in case you are not familiar with them. You can just go over here to this News Royale tab and look at them for yourself. But the main things are the Archer's got a nerf, Minor Crown Tower damage nerf, Golden Knight's going to be a little less broken with his dashes. Phoenix is basically the same the same thing nothing happened to the phoenix reduce its effectiveness blah 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 blah. no it, it didn't reduce literally anything and the mega minion got a what is this i mean, I mean are we are we serious one point a point one sec this is irrelevant the mega minion is good the phoenix is better that's what you need to know it is possible to use the mega minion if you feel like it but the phoenix is still better it does not have a DPS advantage. Like, you can literally go and do the math. It does not have a DPS advantage over the Phoenix. Okay, but basically, um, there's not really anything important. The Furnace, the whatever, Furnace sucks. Spear Goblins, they're all right. But the problem is they instead of nerfing broken cards, they buff other random cards when the Spear Goblins clearly don't get usage because other cards are better and broken. That's It's not because the Spear Goblins need a buff, but... Um, that'll make Goblin Hut a little more annoying. Rascal's got a pretty big buff, but I haven't seen them since the season started in Grand Challenges. Um, so, you know, they're basically going to be spaced farther. Um, it's interesting. They're going to be... It doesn't matter. Rascals are still ass. So, anyways, this is a really good deck for you to continue using. It was a good deck last season, and it will continue to be good next season in the meta and in Grand Challenges right now. So, let's hop into some games in a Grand Challenge to showcase how to play this deck. All right, guys. So, you might be asking, hey, why are you using this deck, or why are you calling this the best deck, even though it's received two nerfs um, with the Miner and the Phoenix? One, I already kind of explained the Phoenix nerf is irrelevant. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think a single interaction ch changes based on 10% damage nerf. And it's 10% death damage nerf. So, you know, it still kills skeletons, bats. I believe spear goblins so i i honestly don't see that making a difference and as far as the miner goes our miner is usually used to chip away at um opposing air targeting units like musketeer wizard so it doesn't really affect us that much i mean it's sure it's going to be annoying you get less chip damage but Definitely deserved a nerf, so I'm happy to see it get a nerf, and doesn't really affect us too much, because all the major interactions, like taking three hits to kill a mother witch, as we will hopefully see here, um, they're all the same, so we just get a little bit less tower damage, so, you know, uh, with lava, you're not getting your main tower damage from the, uh, I believe, from the, the miner, so, I'm sorry, I kind of got lost for words for a second there but yeah i mean that 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 was a pretty simple little aggressive play from me there i i had a defensive card decided to go with the lava because it would have it, it was good value getting good value there and yeah i mean we just got good value and we killed his mother witch killed his mother witch so i think that was just good that was good um grand challenges typically you're gonna see some oh i was i was uh, actually, they shouldn't have done that tombstone, but I didn't know he was back to his mother witch. So that was a bad play on my part. I didn't keep track of his cycle. But yeah, Grand Challenges, they're not going to have the best players. Uh, grand Challenges are a really good way to practice because you can face some, some, some good players towards the end of the Grand Challenge. But number one, it gives you good rewards and it gives you players from all sorts of skill ranges to help you improve. So I think that's really good to play Grand Challenges as a new player, or just somebody trying to practice Lava. Um, yeah, as far as this matchup goes, definitely a tough matchup, but uh, we can bait his Fireball out pretty well here. Barbarian's coming in. I'm yo. I told you I couldn't get the words out fast enough. I was like, okay, the mother witch is coming in here, and boom, the mother witch came in. Okay, that 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 shouldn't. The the in was very important there. I'm not gonna say anything else about that. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna drop a interesting fireball actually. I'm gonna drop the drags here. 
I'm probably just gonna go Barbarians again because honestly, he just used Fireball. Good luck dealing with this all. We're gonna go with another Miner. Hopefully, we might catch two Mother Witches. Okay, he didn't have enough Elixir to play a Mother Witch. We're gonna Arrows quickly there and keep our Skeleton Dragons alive and they're splashing. Oh my god, they're splashing. Okay, that's crazy. I never thought we would see the day where Skeleton Dragons actually splashed something, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go Flying Machine in the pocket. Quickly end this game. Oh... Oh, the Skeleton of King ability got me. It got me good. Okay, that's that's whatever. We're going to wrap up this Royal Giant. We had, like, full HP on the towers. I didn't really care that much. We're going to go Miner. We're going to go Arrows as well. He is going to pull us. So we're going to need to get another Arrows down. But we do have the Barbarians and the Tombstone, so I'm not too worried about any shenanigans that he might pull. See, look at that. Look at that. We're not scared of any shenanigans. We'll go flying machine just like this. Hopefully now we'll end it. There we go. Good game. Royal Giant got stomped on. Definitely not an easy matchup, but we managed to, to handle it pretty well. All right, boys. Let's get into the next game here. Um, okay. Um, I like flying machine first play. If your opponent and you don't do anything for like a minute or 30 45 seconds if you just sit here um, it's usually not great to wait till double um, if you can force mess up your opponent's cycle a little bit before double that's a good play it's also never good to go lava first play with this deck so flying machine after a little bit is fine because honestly you can't get punished for using your flying machine and it forces a response out of your opponent unless you know they want to take a good solid 900 damage so um he replies Skeleton Army. He's got Skeleton Army Golem. Oh, God. Okay. This is not great. I don't like Golem with no Tombstone in hand. But I will be just Barbarianing. Is that the correct term of... Uh, whatever. <laughs> I will be using the Barbarians. And we will be wrapping up this Golem. And he does have Skeleton Army. So I thought it was a little... I thought it was like an off-meta deck. But he does have E-Dragon. So it looks to have most of the same synergy. And now... Um, Got two super low health air units coming in here. We do have to be a little bit careful, but it's not that. It's not that scary. We're just gonna flying machine here to make sure we don't take any damage from this lumberjack. Okay, we took one hit. I'm actually gonna follow up with drags as well here because, like, I feel like this is a nice little play. It's, like, we're gonna get some damage. Um, he just I couldn't afford a lava, and he used both of his air cards. So I felt like it was a good time to go in and, and look at that, it was, ladies and gentlemen. We take the nice damage lead. Um, so yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna go lava. I'm going to I'm not really worried. Yeah, I mean he goes golem in the back. Eh, whatever. We're gonna get some chip out of this lava. See, the goal here is to actually make sure that we are wrapping up his counter push. You got to be very careful with lavas into golems like that. That's not my favorite play, but we got to be very careful that we don't give him a massive counter push. Um, so yeah, flying machine is going to come in like this. We're just going to go arrows to wrap up these bats and we get some nice damage. As you can see, Phoenix going after his support units, actually very clutch from the Phoenix there. Um, we're going to go barbarians on top of this lumberjack like this to make sure the lumberjack isn't doing anything fishy. And then we're going to go Miner up here, with followed by a Flying Machine, and we have a big counter push coming in. I'm going to follow up with the arrows as well here, and we are going to take out the Skeletons. We get a little bit of damage, take out the Skeletons. Um, we should be able to lock onto the tower with the machine here. Forces out a NATO as well, so I think this is a very good time to go with the Lava, if I do say so myself. Um, Golem, okay. We've definitely got the Elixir Advantage here, so... Uh, Hopefully we can take advantage of that. I've got a tombstone coming in. I will be probably just using the miner on the tower in just a second here. We're going to go arrows as well on this night witch. And we do hit the second round of bats. That's clutch. We're going to go flying machine as well and then get ready to... Why would you do that? I was going to say get ready to make a counter push with this phoenix and flying machine. But he just decided to tornado his, my phoenix into the tower? Okay, well, thank you. Thanks. I appreciate that. Anyways, let's get into another game. All right, boys. Next game coming in here. Let's uh, let's see. Hopefully, we can get a very nice, tough opponent here compared to the last guy. Oh my God, it's a furnace. Okay. Anyways, tombstone counters furnace pretty well. Um, if you just place the tombstone 
this position or a little bit lower uh, that's also nice it's going to fully wrap up the furnace unless your of course your opponent plays something on the tombstone and it's a three for four so that's good see like now the interaction gets a little bit ruined because the e-spirit came in here but we should still be fine i think um this guy's running a what is he what is he cooking guys he's got furnace phoenix goblins i, I have no idea what this guy's cooking but let's let's check it out we're gonna go barbs like this we're gonna go um, minor with this, and now we've got a split lane push coming in. That's very nice, very nice, very splendid indeed. Let's see if we can. Um, no, I, I I didn't get that timing down. I wanted to see if we could possibly get the timing so that we could like arrows the last fire spirit and get more barb damage, but that didn't. I didn't really feel like that would have worked, so I didn't do it. Um, but yeah, we got. We got the damage we needed. We got the damage we needed. So this guy, he's running like a Bob the Rock type deck. Shout out my man, Bob. Um, Actually, I don't know if it's a Bob the Rock type deck. It, it's it's like, because he runs RG Furnace, right? So it's like it's like his deck, but I, I don't quite know because I haven't seen all this guy's cards. So I'm not quite sure what if he is a Bob the Rock yet. Could be. We don't know for sure. Um, he's got another furnace coming in. Let's just go lava in the right lane to finish off this tower. It's not like a, it's not like an overcommitment because we do need to make sure we take the tower. So we we might not stack a ton of air cards behind this lava, but we will definitely um, just want to make sure that I can go ahead and take this tower. So I'm gonna go Skelly Drags behind here. I want to do a little bit of fireball baiting. We're gonna go Phoenix here. So it is looking like a Bob the Rock deck. That's okay. Bob the Rock. This might actually be the exact Bob the Rock deck. He's got Furnace. He's got the the, the Lumberjack. Lumberjack uh, Royal Giant is always an interesting. It's always been an interesting idea. So yeah, as you can see, didn't take much over there to wrap up his uh, left tower or right tower. Sorry, but we managed to get it done. Um, so once again, I'm actually going to just go Barb's under here because he, I believe he has Lightning, not not the Fireball, which is actually very nice. Lightning decks. Uh, are very easy or they're way easier than fireball decks in terms of trying to beat them so uh with your fireball bait lava deck right here so good 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 third dub of the video or i i don't actually know i think if this is the third game we'll do one more i kind of lost track so um yeah hopefully we'll get one more dub for the video and uh yeah that'll be it okay let's get into the last game here let's uh hopefully we can get a nice, solid three crown up. I want the three crown. I want it. I want it. You don't get three crowns often with this deck. Like, okay, it's a hog deck. We're not getting a three crown. Nope. Um, unless it's hog EQ, and then we could possibly make him give up. Or if it's hog 2.6. That would be the ultimate, like, just pleasure, is to make a hog 2.6 player rage quit. That would be absolutely amazing. Could be... Hog EQ. That's actually an even better matchup. That's an even better matchup, ladies and gentlemen. You, I might, I've got a wide grin right now, boys. I love me some Hog EQ. This is not classic Hog EQ. Where did they start putting deliveries in their deck? When did they do that? And then the bats, you're supposed to have one air counter. That's one air counter, one building. That's, that's it. That's it. Tesla, die. Hurry up and die. Hurry up and, okay, he finally died. But we are taking a ton of damage from this Hog Rider. That took a dangerous turn. Um, definitely still my matchup, I believe. Um, especially since the barbs are pretty much uncounterable uh, for like my defense. He can't really find a way to get rid of the Barbarians. So um, they're going to be very nice on defense. The delivery and the bats are going to pose a little bit... I have an extra challenge, but I don't think it'll be too rough. It won't be too difficult. We just got to make sure, you know do anti-earthquake positions like that that's a com that's literally useless but hey i mean it's an anti-earthquake position you can earthquake both the tower and the uh and the, the the tombstone when we do those anti positions so we're gonna go barbs like this and there is no real counter to the barb so i imagine he deliveries or bats yeah that works actually we can get a minor down can't we Oh, not quite. But the flying machine tanks for the miner, so the miner might get an extra couple hits in. And yeah, that actually worked beautifully. The miner, I don't know if it takes with the with the damage nerf. It should. Um, let's check. Well, let's go with the anti position again, which is actually kind of 
weirdly helpful because he can't earthquake both the the hog or the tombstone and the tower so i think it's a it's not even a that's not very bad i mean we can kind of alternate uh, between killing his hog with my tombstone and killing it with my barbs since he outcycles us see now you know since he outcycled us now we're back to barbs and we take the hog out with no hits so very nice indeed and now by the time he gets another hog going we will have uh you know the phoenix in the tombstone in the anti-nato spot or the anti-earthquake spot how many times have i said anti-earthquake spot and messed up the thing over and over and over and i don't even know if he has earthquake he hasn't even played it once i've been anti-earthquaking the whole time and i don't even know if he has an earthquake so <laughs> anyways Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, if you did and if it benefited you, let me know. Definitely upgrade this deck and have a great rest of your day.